Well, hello there, friends. I recently discovered this week that we as human beings have the ability to turn light into matter. Even crazier, I saw an optical illusion online that was caused by light that almost made it appear as though a ship at sea was floating in the air above the water. And it just made me think that we really take for granted a lot of things that exist in life. But today, science really helped me believe in something that I think has been missing in the world. A little bit of magic. So light is probably one of the most magical things that exist today. It's really more than meets or even blinds the eye. If you've been out in the sun recently, you know what I'm talking about. But we think of light as something that illuminates, shines, and for those versed in science, we also know it can do so much more. Have you ever looked across the horizon and seen something that shouldn't be there? Maybe, honestly, a ship that's floating above the ocean. Or how about this one? You may have seen this. A city suspended in the sky. Kind of like a vision that's pulled straight from a dream, or, as I like to speculate, a glitch in the matrix. There are videos all over the internet, and they have headlines that scream, floating city appears over China. Or how about this one you may have heard? The sky mirage baffles locals. I got one more you might have seen. Is this proof of another dimension? So they definitely cause the mind to really imagine the scenarios that could happen when you see things like this. And I don't honestly blame people. If I saw what looked like a floating city, I would definitely have some speculative thought about what's going on. But before we jump into interdimensional portals or cloaked alien ships, there might be a more grounded explanation. And it really comes down to the magic of light. So there's this thing called Feta Morgana, and you really have to love how science sometimes uses naming conventions that come from fantasies or myth or lore. It's kind of cool. I always appreciate that. But let's break down Feta Morgana. In essence, have you ever driven on a hot day and seen a puddle of water on the road that just vanishes when you get close? That is what you would think of as a basic mirage. It's light bending because warm air and cooler air are stacked in just the right way. But when things get more extreme, you get something called Feta Morgana. For those that don't know, this is named after the sorceress Morgan Le Fay from Mithorian legend. And this illusion was thought to lure sailors to their doom. And honestly, it kind of still does, at least on TikTok. So here's what's happening from a large scale perspective. You have light from a distant object, like a ship or an island or a building. Now it passes through multiple air layers and basically different temperatures. So these layers bend the light like a lens or even better, a funhouse mirror. So the results you might see is that object stretched or stacked or inverted or even crazier floating above where it actually is. So basically, we're seeing real stuff, just not where it really is, which is so cool. Your eyes aren't really lying to you. Your brain is just interpreting the bent light. So the next time someone says they saw a floating city in the sky, they're not lying. They actually might have, but just not in the way that you think. To be real, it's not fake. It's not Photoshop. It's just physics. But that is not the only trick up light sleeve that I learned this week. All right, let me paint kind of a sci-fi scene for you. A man made of liquid metal steps through a fire. He reforms solid, deadly, liquid. Now, for those that are as old as I am, they might remember Terminator 2. And that is basically the T-1000 from Terminator 2. And it was very cool to watch this type of new machine or new robot. Still, I guess AI is taking over at that time, but you're able to see him change a bunch of shapes. He could get pew-pewed, and then those 
just kind of go through him and this liquid matter and it's all kinds of scary that happens i guess on a more positive note i always think of uh star trek discovery for those star trek fans there is a, a scene in one of the shows where a starship officer summons a tool mid-air it's like metal floats out of nowhere and it reshapes itself that i think in the show was called programmable matter now what's even crazier is the wild part for all of this science just tiptoed into that territory it's about to get crazy hold your horses so researchers in italy just turned light into a super solid and that's a state of matter that acts like a solid and a liquid at the same time so yeah light that thing that flies through space at 186,000 miles per second can now flow and hold a shape and that is not sci-fi that is once again physics there is a research team that's led by Demetrius Tripajorgis and Daniel Savanto and it's at Italy's National Research Council I like to call it CNR because that's its abbreviations but it utilized a semiconductor material called gallium arsenide and they basically directed a laser into this gallium arsenide which had been engineered with microscopic ridges and this interaction led to the formation of something called polaritons which is basically hybrid particles that are both photons and matter excitons excitons it makes me excited so these polaritons condensed into a super solid state exhibiting both structure and rigidity and a frictionless flow so to sum it up they turned light yeah light into something that acts like a solid and a liquid at the same time so how'd they do it let's break it down and i want to start first with what the heck is a super solid is it like superman is it like captain america meaning is it superhuman well either or it's like if honey could hold shape like jello mm, jello honey I don't know if that actually would taste good, but it still flows like silk, right? Once again, it's like honey could hold shape like jello and it's flowed smooth like silk. That makes absolutely no sense unless you live in the quantum realm. And that's where super solid light lives. It's part structure, it's part ghost, it's a frictionless crystal, something straight out of a holodeck blueprint. And until recently, only really seen in ultra cold gases near absolute zero but now we got it it's made out of light so my first thought when it was this is how do you make solid from light how do you make light act like a solid so here's my thought process with it or at least how i tried to interpret it okay imagine you have a flashlight and you shine it at the wall the light just bounces off you can't touch it it doesn't hold shape it just goes now imagine if you could freeze that light not just stop it but freeze it and shape it like a molding jelly out of sunlight molding jelly out of sunlight interesting very very interesting okay so that's basically how scientists figured out how to do that so in my simple mind i still really didn't understand it so i wanted to break it down even simpler so let's start with this friendlier version of what I think actually happened. So let's start with a super cool material. They used, as mentioned earlier, something called gallium arsenide. Now, think of it like it's a very fancy light sensitive cookie. Mmm, cookie. So number two, this cookie, it's etched with tiny ridges. So imagine this cookie and drawing tiny bumps on the cookie so that light doesn't just bounce off, it gets trapped and twisted in weird ways. Now my favorite part of all of this, obviously, is they had to shine a laser on it. I wonder how many times I can get away with that. Because it's not gonna stop. It's never gonna stop. When they blasted it with the laser, something amazing happened. The light mixed with tiny bits of matter in the material, Kind of like the milk mixing with chocolate cocoa powder to make chocolate milk. I used to love Nestle Quick. Do they still make that stuff? You don't know? Better ask somebody. So that mixture makes something called polaritons. And not just a cool word to say, but these are half light, half matter particles. They're like little superheroes that, that are fast like light, but shaped like matter. Hmm. 
what would I call a superhero that's fast like the Flash and shapes like matter? Maybe I'll call it ladder? Maybe I'll call it lighter? No, probably not lighter. Hmm. Superhero names coming soon. So these Polaritons, they get chilly and clump up when they gather together. And they start acting weird. I mean, I know you were expecting more scientific, but that's honestly the only way I can describe it is they act weird. They form a pattern like a crystal, but they also allow flow like a liquid. And but up but ba that's a super solid. Go figure. All right. The big idea here is they didn't freeze light like ice. They made it part of a weird new particle that can hold a shape and smooth flowly and s move smoothly. You see what I did there? Because I didn't. I have no idea what happened. It's kind of like Jello could float through the air without ever losing its uh, squishiness factor. That's the way I look at it. That makes sense. But why does all of this even matter? Well, imagine computers that can run on frictionless beams of light. Circuits made of super solid light that never overheat, that never lose power. Quantum computers with near zero error rates because, honestly, your qubits, qubits flow in perfect harmony. And right now, some of the biggest problems with computers is that they tend to overheat. So having something that could keep it cool, even think of artificial intelligence and how we have these large data centers that one of the big things they try to do is keeping those computers cool. But with this, it could help with that. But let's even think bigger. So super solids might be our way to simulate dark matter unlocking new phases of the universe or build machines where the parts don't just move, they melt through each other. Now, there's some philosophical questions here as well, or really thought-provoking ideas. And one of those is, if light can become matter, then can matter become light? For those that understand the science behind that, remember, the faster you travel at the speed of light, the less mass that you need to have, which is why a photon is the speed of light, because it has no mass. But can you imagine if we could do the opposite? Could we travel? Could we traverse? Could we gallivant throughout the entire universe as light? It also kind of brings a weird question. Can we live inside a super solid system? Are we closer to controlling the very fabric of what the universe is made of? I feel like every once in a while, science takes a leap that feels poetic. And to me, this is one of those moments, turning light that ancient symbol of clarity, speed, and energy into something that flows and holds a shape and dances to like a quantum rhythm. And that's not just science, that almost sounds more like alchemy. As I mentioned earlier, light is just one of those things that I believe we really take for granted in this world. It's one of the last magical things that are out there. And it's been around since the beginning of time, the time as we know it anyways. And it's used in so many metaphors from religion to science, and it can also be used to heat, to illuminate, to transverse information across space and time. Most importantly, it can tell the story of a star and of our universe. We all tend to think of light as fast, unstoppable, a laser slicing through the darkness. But what if I told you that light isn't just fast? It's eternal. Light, the photon, actually has no mass at all, and anything without mass doesn't experience time. So from light's perspective, it was emitted and instantly arrives. It could be across galaxies, across eons. There's no aging, there's no delay, there's just presence. You are here, then you're gone. When you stand under the stars at night, when you're not just looking at space, you're looking at history. Because every single star, as I mentioned earlier, is showing you its past. It's carried to you by a photon that's been traveling millions, maybe billions of years. That photon is the storyteller of what happened at that exact moment that it was created. And by the time it arrives at your eye, it thinks it was born and died at the exact same time. And here's the thing, that photon, it never stopped once it's created, it just moves. It never slowed down, it never aged. Now I gotta get a little bit philosophical when it comes to light itself, because imagine this. Some days the stars will burn out. Galaxies will eventually drift apart. Black holes will evaporate. Matter will decay and the universe, it will go dark. 
but not silent. Because even when everything ends, light will still be moving. Left over photons and the echo of what was, light will be wandering through the cold remains of space. There won't be any eyes left to see them. There won't be any planets left for that light to shine on, but it'll still just be there. It'll still be just light, still doing what it's always done. Moving forward, unchanged, unstoppable. In the end, light isn't just what lets us see, it's what lets the universe remember. From the first burst of the Big Bang to the final flicker in the dark, light will be honestly the last witness. So we began this episode with light becoming matter, and we wandered through mirages and illusions, but maybe the real magic of light isn't that it never needed to be seen to be real, it just needed to exist. And that's why I think light is really one of the last magical things that exist on Earth that we take for granted. Thank you everybody for watching. This is another episode of The Archive where the thought becomes the signal. And now light basically never stops moving. If you like the episode and some of the content within it, please hit the subscribe button because there'll be more coming whether you like it or not because this is what I love to talk about and this is what I love to do. But thank you for watching. Once again, subscribe. See you guys in the next episode.